In this AutoCAD tutorial video, I want to go over the basics of how you use the polar array command. So to do that, I'm going to create a very, very simple object. I'm going to create a circle, uh, starting with the center point, and I'll do a 10 foot radius. And then I will make another circle with a 12 inch or one foot radius. Then I will just move that over from its center point to this top quadrant point. And this will be an easy way to illustrate how a basic polar array works. So I will pick polar array and what it wants me to do is select the objects. So I'll just select the small circle. This is what I'm going to basically be copying and rotating around a center point. I'll hit enter and it wants me to specify the center point of the array. So that's why I put it on this larger circle that makes it really easy to pick a center point. Although I could uh, you know, pick it anywhere out here and it would work just as well. You don't actually need this guide. But I'll pick that center point and the circle allows us to see that it, you know, it goes perfectly around the circle here. And we're getting a very similar uh, array creation contextual tab like we did um, with the rectangular. And you'll see that you can actually um, make a lot of the same types of changes. For example, the number of items and um, the space in between, things like that. So for number of items, maybe I want to change that to 12. Okay, when I click outside of that, you'll see that it'll just fill it up accordingly. And we can change the space in between. We can change the angle, which right now is a 30 degree angle. And we can also change the fill. So it defaults at 360, but if I only wanted that to fill half of it, for example, I could change that to 180, and it would squeeze them all on one side or the other. So you have a lot of flexibility here. So when we get something really basic like that, you know, we can just hit enter and there you have it. There's your uh, polar array. If we want to make some changes to it, just like we did before, we can click on it and it will open up this menu and then we can come in and make a few changes. So for example, we only have one row right now. We could say, how about three rows? And now you'll see we're starting to get actual kind of like a, a sunburst type of pattern. And we can say how far in between and what that total distance is, just like we did before. So if I make that number bigger, they'll spread out and so on. So we can do something like that to make some changes. Okay, and we can also replace the item like we did before. So maybe I'll make a circle off to the side here. Um, with a 24 inch radius, so it's bigger so we can see the difference. I'll click on my arrayed object and I could do something like replace item. I will pick my replacement object, hit enter, pick its base point, and then I could go around, for example, and change the ones that I'm interested in. So I could do something like that. I could also go inside of here and say that I want to edit a source object. Then I can pick the object and I could tell it not to show me this anymore, but I'll just say okay. And I will make some type of edit. Maybe I'll make another circle there that's 18 inches and then I'll come up here and say save changes. So you could easily get something that's uh, you know a lot more interesting. If I click on this, I'd also like to point out that, uh, you know, you can change things like levels. So right now, this is as if we're drawing it flat on a piece of paper. But we could actually be um, putting this more into a, a third dimension type of thing. So here it says levels. Instead of one, I could have five, for example. And the space in between, you know, maybe I want to do something like uh, five feet. Okay and then I'll close that. And at this point it doesn't really look like anything happened, but if I change from a top view here to something like a southwest isometric, you'll see that in fact we are now going up in space with a bunch of copies. If I do a 3D orbit so you can just sort of you know spin around and see that, you'll see that here are my five levels of this arrayed object. Okay, so you have a lot of options there. You can really get pretty interesting. I can just change this back to my top view 
click on that and I can always take that back down to one and so on. Okay, so that's the the basics of how a you know simple polar array works.